guys! Welcome to the Spoonie channel where we are unfiltered, unafraid, and pain recognizes pain. <sighs> Before I get into this, I never ever say this, but if you could like this video, if you like the content, or subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. Like I said, I never say it because I just assume people know how YouTube works and I don't want to puke it at you <laughs> every time I do a video, but it would really... It would really go a long way to encouraging somebody who has a lot of pain to get this out there to keep doing it. Today is going to be a little bit heavy. I want to talk about opioids and the opioid crisis. I'm not going to get in depth, but I have a couple different perspectives. I've had somebody in my life, somebody very, very very close to me who's battled addiction. They battled addiction through a very pivotal time in my life and as much as I would like to put all my business out there and tell you who this is and how it affected my life, I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to do that because I have nephews and I have nieces and the internet is forever and these are things that they don't need to know about their family members. They don't need to find this stuff out. And I won't do that. That's not for me to tell, yes, it was my life and my journey and I had to put up with it. Or not put up with it, but we had to deal with it. But that is not my secret to tell. It is not my business to put out there. Addiction and recovery is personal. It's personal, and I'm not going to out somebody like that. But I will say that I've, I've seen it. I've seen, and not just addiction, but pills, opiates. It was, it gripped this family member's life. And I understand. I understand the need for regulation. I understand the need to hold Oh, I'm sorry. My eyelashes are sticking together and it's driving me banana sandwich. I understand the need to hold pharmacy companies responsible. I understand the need to separate the money that's being filtered from big pharma to the government and campaigns and the fact that a diabetes shot costs a dollar to make and people are having to ration their insulin. I, I understand all this, but I am also somebody in chronic pain, chronic debilitating pain. And sometimes I do think that in the effort, in the campaign, to deal with the opioid crisis, which is legitimate, the people who truly need this medication, the people who it was developed for, are suffering. Because what's happening is, doctors are afraid to prescribe it, and, and understandably so. They get scrutinized. They have licenses that they can lose, practices, their way of life. And they're scared to death to prescribe the pain medication that we need for just a modicum of a quality of life. That's where we are as a country. That they're cracking down so much. And trust me, I don't want overdoses. I don't want people overdosing. I don't want people making heroin. I don't want people struggling with addiction. I don't want pills getting prescribed when they shouldn't be prescribed. I get it, and I know that it's easy to say, just don't do it, or just make sure that these people are really sick. It's easy for me to sit behind this camera and say that, but it's a lot harder to do, and I get that. I do. But money, money, campaign finances, all of this, all of this is boiling down to why there's a crisis. There's a crisis because, 
because of government contracts, because of handshakes and deals and well, it's just the back end of pharmacy is so corrupt that now it's causing us to, to have to rise up and say, no, we can't do this to people anymore. We can't have overdoses. We can't have people dying in the streets. And I agree. But, but, if I didn't have this medication, and I am lucky enough to have doctors that will prescribe it, but if I didn't have this medication, I don't know that I would be here. I don't know that I would be here. And that's the God's honest truth because the amount of pain that I'm in on a daily basis probably would have done me in by now. I don't know that anybody can handle that much pain. And I, I think I'm a pretty strong person. I don't know anyone can. Constantly. It's torture. It's absolute and utter torture. And the worst part is now we're getting to the point where it's pain management doctors. So if you want this medication that will provide you a quality of life, now you go to pain management doctors. Well, guess how pain management doctors are looked at? They're looked like pill mills. That's what people think. If you, are, if you go to a pain management doctor and you go to the hospital or the emergency room, and they see that, I've had it firsthand. They treat you like a drug addict. No matter what you tell them they, you have, no matter what reason you give that you are on these medications, you're an addict. You just want pills. So these pain management doctors who are trying to, and they are under severe FDA scrutiny, severe, severe scrutiny. These doctors are last line to a somewhat less painful life have to justify themselves as not drug pushers. And it's a hard thing for me to reconcile because I'm in so many support groups I have so many people that I see that don't have the benefit of these medications. And when I say I'm strong, they are clearly stronger than I am. Because I don't know what I would do without them. And I have been very vocal because of the addiction in my past. It took me far, far too long to seek the relief, the relief that I should have. Far too long. And I've been very, very vocal with my doctors about not wanting to increase my dosage. I've been on the same dose of pain medication for the last four or five years. So truth be told, the efficacy of this is probably akin to a baby aspirin. But it gives me something. Something. And I don't know what the answer is. I don't. I don't know how to make it easy for everybody, but what I do know is there are so, so many of us suffering. So, so many of us trying to get from one day to the next who wake up scared to assess their bodies, scared to take that first step out of bed, scared to have to go to work when they're still working and know how they're going to feel when they come home or go to work and not have any kind of medication to help them through that day. It's just in, in the throes of this crisis, in the trenches of how we fix this, we cannot, we cannot forget the people who need it, the people who this was created for, the people who literally depend on this to take their pain from a nine to a seven and survive, who need this to work because they can't take two years to get social security. 
who need this so that they can hold their child's hand and possibly walk down the street. Don't forget about these faces, these bodies, these people. Because I feel like in the throes of trying to control something absolutely horrific and terrible, we're losing sight of the real reason these medications exist. The real reason that they're prescribed to people who are suffering. And like I said, it's easy for me to preach. It's easy for me to sit here and say things. I don't know what the answer is. I don't. And I'm not, that's not my job because I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't. But something has to be done. Something has to be done. And it's not just, it's, it goes beyond pain medication. Like I said, I have a, I have a brother-in-law who's diabetic. And to think about people who have to ration their insulin and possibly die? Come on. Come on. At what point? At what point are pharmacies held, phar pharmaceutical companies held responsible? At what point is the government held responsible for allowing this to happen? For taking money? For awarding contracts based on a quid pro quo situation? You scratch my back, I scratch yours. And meanwhile, the people, the little people, the people who need the medication and the people who are getting the medication and are abusing it, we're just getting lost in the shuffle. We're just checker and chess pieces that are getting moved around on the board. It's a sad situation. It's sad and my heart breaks. My heart breaks for everybody who's suffering with addiction or has suffered with addiction. My heart breaks for everybody who can't get the medication that they need to live day to day, my heart breaks for the forgotten and the dismissed and the people that are called liars and I just, my heart breaks because we're, we're the collateral damage. We're the collateral damage in all of this. That's my real thoughts about the opioid crisis, is that the people who should be taking care of this are the people who are causing the problems and the people who need the help are the collateral damage. That's it. That's it. I don't, I don't know what more to say except if you're struggling and you're in pain and you don't have the medication you need, I'm so sorry. And my heart, my heart is ripped open for you. And if you're somebody who is struggling with addiction or have to make the choice as somebody who was an addict or struggled with addiction to get the medication that you need to feel better, my heart is ripped open for you. As always, Pain recognizes pain, and I see you always. I love you guys.